Uh, the Geneva Conference, or what's going to become probably the Geneva process uh, on Syria, is unlikely to yield any uh, major substantive res results, especially early on. Uh, it's going to take a while to see how these negotiations are actually going to pl uh, play out. There are fundamental elements of the situation that aren't going to allow for, for great substantive progress. And, and the, fir the first is, I think, the determination of the regime to stay in power, to fight for power, and to crush the opposition, and the support of its allies uh, in doing that. Right now, ostensibly, the Assad regime is winning. And so it has no reason to make any political concession whatsoever. And the rebels are not also not you know, going to be able to uh, negotiate very much in a substantive way. They want Assad out. They want the Assad regime out. That's their bottom line. The other problem with Geneva, of course, is that whatever opposition shows up, it's not going to be uh, the Islamist Al-Qaeda affiliates. And therefore, the opposition will not be able to speak for the opposition on the ground. In positive terms, what we might see is, you know, first an, an agreement to continue talking and in the hope that eventually that will lead uh, to some progress. Uh, second, we might see some progress on humanitarian issues. But I think that Assad too will extract a price and also try and ingratiate himself to the international community somehow, that Assad will be a great humanitarian by allowing some supplies to get to the people he is currently starving as a matter of policy. And we might see some uh, movement on local ceasefires or some, some effort to tamp down these, the violence in specific areas where it's in the interest of both the regime and the rebel forces to do that. My fear is that the United States, uh, the administration, is going to put pressure on the opposition to stay at the table even if no progress is being made. Uh, and uh, talking for talking's sake, I think will be extremely damaging to the opposition. The process itself legitimizes the regime, which m many people consider to be Ill illegitimate. Uh, it, it makes the regime a partner in, in, in this process as opposed to a target of, of the process. Assad isn't our partner, but he wants to be. If the longer Assad is our partner, on the chemical weapons deal, for example, we need Assad to help ship these chemical weapons after the country. The longer this process goes on, the more secure Assad is. Um, if we view him as an ally against Al-Qaeda, this makes him more valuable to the international community. If at Geneva, uh, what we have is a discussion about terrorism in Syria, about Al-Qaeda opposition, uh, then we will have failed. The U.S. doesn't have a lot of tools to bring an end to the war, uh, and especially to bring an, end, bring an end to the war in a, in a positive sense. Because of the administration's refusal to really uh, consider uh, providing military assistance uh, to the rebels, uh, that it prevents us from having any effective voice or influence on the armed rebels in, that are inside, uh, inside Syria. We have some influence on the political opposition, but they don't matter so much. Uh, what we need to do is to get back in t seriously into the game of providing military assistance uh, to rebel forces that we can work with uh, ideologically. Uh, we don't need to assist the extremists uh, in this fight, but there are a lot of people that don't fall into that camp uh, that, we could, that we could assist. Well, when we think about military assistance uh, to the rebels, the, the tendency is always to talk about guns, right? I mean, what kind of weapons they should have, what kind of weapons we don't want them to have. Uh, all, all you know those those kinds of issues, but but really when we're considering military assistance to to the rebels, it should be seen as a military assistance package, that is advice, you know, training, intelligence, weapons and ammunition, logistics, you know, type uh, systems and, and vehicles and all that. So we should be thinking of this as a, some kind of total package that broadly increases the capability of, of rebel forces that we, that we can work with. We said we were going to arm the Free Syria Army, the secular opposition. We didn't do so in a significant fashion. And over time, in the absence of meaningful support for these more moderate opposition elements, the Saudis, the Qataris, people who weren't discerning, provided financial assistance to militias that were Islamist. And lo and behold, these people have, are now in the ascendancy on the ground. If we really get on board and show a commitment to reestablishing 
meaningful assistance to the Free Syria Army, to the non-Islamist um, opposition elements. I think we can re-engage with the Gulf on directing funding. But right now, the United States on Syria has zero credibility.